Allah. You ready? All right. Shalom, shalom. All praise to Yahweh Bahashram. I'm not sure if Yahweh Shai Kwam Yashallah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. So, this is the Most High's High Holy Day. This is uh, Hebrew Trojan Let under the Masharash Allah. And uh, again, this is the Most High's High Holy Day, the Shabbat. And as always, we praise the Most High High Holy Days on the Shabbat. And which is the Shabbat is one of the highest high holy days uh, that the Most High gave to the nation of Israel it, from the creation. Okay. okay, from the creation. So we always honor the Most High High Holy Day. Most High say rehearse his righteous acts. Good. So that's what we're doing, rehearsing the righteous acts. Right. You rehearse so you get better at it. That's why you rehearse. Okay, it's like practice. We're practicing, right? <laughs> and so while we're practicing, what we do is get better and we get better and get better at it. Okay, so the Most High is long suffering. He didn't give you time to practice, right? Right. Right. So um, and that's what we're doing, rehearsing. Most High know we, you know, sometimes we may not be able to do what we're supposed to do, but we're rehearsing. So when the Most High take us out of here and deliver us out of here, take us back into the wilderness. Uh, the most I don't have to say rehearse anymore. You didn't already rehearse it enough where you just boom, fall right into it. See? Uh, so when you want to become a professional at something, what do you do? You practice it first. Okay? And you continue to practice it. Right? And you put in the work ethic and the diligence. All right? To get better and better and better. That's what the most I giving us a chance to do. That's why most of us is, is merciful, right? Right. He's all merciful and long suffering, giving us grace. So in our grace period, and we're all under grace, come. Huh? He's given us time to rehearse the righteous acts. Okay, so we, that's why we got we got to uh, take this grace period, even though we're in our captivity, going through our trials and tribulations in our captivity. But we take the grace period uh, as a time to practice our, our craft, and our craft is keeping the law, statute, commandments of the Most High. Come, huh? that's our craft. That's our culture. Right. Our culture is the commandments, law, right. statute, commandments, of the, and the ceremonial laws of the Most High. That's our culture, and that's our custom. Understand? Uh, the Hebrew custom is keeping the commandments. Huh. Law, statute, commandments. There is no other Hebrew custom beside that. Right? Now, the customs of the world are evil and are wicked. But the Hebrew custom, right, the nation of Israel customs and culture is keeping the law, statute, and commandments and ceremonial laws of the Most High. Simple as that. So, uh, why did Yahweh come? Okay, and we're just going to, uh, I think there's three points of reason, or three aspects, pretty much on the top of the list, why you, how should I come? One is to, uh, how should I came to bring the gospel? And the gospel means what? Good news? Good news. Good news. Mm -hmm. So you came to bring the gospel, the new covenant, right? The new covenant, mm -hmm. which is, of course, it's the new covenant, but it's, is based off what? The old covenant. Come. <laughs> so you gotta remember, it's not an entirely different covenant, it's based off the old covenant. But he came to bring the gospel, the good news, right? And to make a reconciliation of peace. How about that? Peace, why would we have to make a re re reconciliation of peace? Peace between who? Israel and the Mosai. Come. Because now we're at odds. We were at odds with the Mosai because we broke the covenant. Come. So now. Uh, it's just like a married couple, right? Don't they have a binding uh, marriage certificate, a, right. a document that states that they're married? And, and they go through marriage vows. Mm -hmm. And the man uh, vows that he would do such and such for his wife, and the wife vows that she would do such and such for her husband. Then all of a sudden, 10, 12, 20 years into the marriage, what happened? <laughs> vows are broken. Okay. Something happens, right? right? And now they're at odds and they're at conflict. Next thing you know, they separate, right? Next thing you know, they want a divorce, right? But there's always room for what? Reconciliation. Okay. Right. Right. So that means, some, and sometimes a married couple does go through that, don't they? Okay. They, they, they separate for a while, and then they, they have to reevaluate their marriage. Put it like that, reevaluate. So what do they do? They, they, they come back together, they talk, whatever, communicate, right? You have to communicate, right? Uh, and then what do they do? Once they reevaluate, they say, okay, let's get remarried. Let's have another marriage vow or covenant, let's say, or marriage document. 
and let's get remarried. And sometimes couples do that, right? Some uh, married couples do that. Husband and wife do that, right? They, they remarry because they found out that um, where they going to go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, like so they pretty much renew their vows. We renew their vows. Where are you going to go? Mm -hmm. You're going to go back out there and try to get somebody new. And okay, sometimes yeah, you may be able to do that. But what I'm saying is, go go back out there. You got to uh, now. We you got to evaluate your new situation, learn that person, right? Understand that sometimes that takes because that takes years, right? And then you don't know if, if you get married to that person, you know, eventually perhaps what's going to happen on down the line that it might not work out. Right. So the the grass is not always greener with somebody else on the other side. But I, I you know maybe yeah, maybe sometimes it might be because of the situation. You know, it depends on the, the circumstance of, of the situation. But still, with the Mosai, you got to remember, we broke the covenant as, as the Mosai's children. And as the Mosai's wife, the Israel's the Mosai's wife, we broke the covenant. Understand? So okay. now that we, we're at odds now. We're at odds at the moment. There's a conflict. Right. So now we got to uh, repair that, that conflict, right? And so Yahweh Shai came... To repair that conflict, Con? Con. he came to uh, make a reconciliation of peace. Because where there was like controversy and was no peace, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Because we broke the covenant. So now Yahweh Shai came to reconcile and be like a mediator. Yeah. So be a go between between us and the Most High. Okay, and so that was the second aspect, and then to be a sacrifice too for the nation of Israel. Okay, we needed a, we needed a high sacrifice so that we could come back, right, as the most size chosen people, and and even in these last days, there's going to be some sacrifices. Huh? You got to make some sacrifices too, and that's why, you know, that the most high brought you into the truth now. So now you have time, so you can evaluate your mind. Okay, what kind of sacrifice? Can I make for the Most High? That's what the Most High want to see in you. What can you do now for the Most High? Understand? And so, and sometimes, uh, you know, the sacrifice you make small sacrifices, but then it it, it leads up to an apex, right? There has to be a, even a higher sacrifice, and that's that's coming. If the Most High is going to try us as gold is tried in the furnace. Huh. So, so we got to get prepared for that. We all do. We all got to get prepared for that. All right? The Most High, you're going you to kill a whole lot of people. The slain of the Most High shall be many. That's right. And the Most High is, there's no redemption without bloodshed. So the Most High is going to take their blood as a sacrifice for the few he's going to deliver. Okay? That's a high mm -hmm. sacrifice. Well, there's over almost 8 billion people on earth. The Most High is going to kill a couple of billion of them. Just to redeem Israel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? God. How about that? Mm. Right? It's already in the works. Right? So now, so those are the three aspects. Y'all should I came to bring the gospel, the new covenant, to make a reconciliation of peace between Israel and the Mosai, and right. to be a sacrifice for the nation of Israel. Okay? God. Those God. are the three top aspects, right? Right. So when you go to Hebrews 8 and 6, so that's what we're going to start off with, Hebrews 8 and 6. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 6. Bring it out. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. All right, so that's Yahweh Shai, right? Yahweh Shai is the mediator, right? He is the mediator and attain, obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator. Okay, so what is mediator? We find out the word mediator means a person who mediates helps to settle a dispute. Well, what dispute do we have with the Most High? <laughs> right. The breaking of the commandments. commandments right? But really, the Most High dispute with us. We really look at it, right? We're right. breaking this commandment. We weren't doing what we were supposed to do. Because the Most High created all nations, and then he brought Israel, he chose Israel, and brought them from amongst the nations 
to serve him. Right. That's why the most I said, Israel, you are my only witnesses. No one else knows me. Right. That's why the Mosai really can't really go to nobody else, the other nations. They don't know the Mosai. <laughs> right. That's yeah. why it says the, the gods of the nations are what? Yeah. Idols. Idols. Because they don't know the Mosai. They're going to serve, even though, yeah, they, they, they had their chance to rule, right? All this had a chance to rule the earth. But they still don't know the Mosai. Right. They serve the idols in their rulership. Esau serves his idols in his rulership. He don't serve the most high. The Egyptians serve the idols. We think the ten, the, the, the ten plagues was about. The ten plagues were plagues against the idols that, that the Egyptians were using and serving. That's why, that's why you had a plague of moraine of cattle. Why would the most high kill the cattle? Most high would, there was no reason for the most high to, to take out cattle, right? Yeah. But the Egyptians were using the cattle as idol gods. Come. They were making them into idol gods. And the Most High said, okay, here, here's, here's what I'm going to bring against your idol god. And then he killed all these moraine of cattle. Come. Come. That's why the Most High did it. You may say, oh, the poor cattle. What the cattle have to do with it? <laughs> now you see why. Yeah, bro, you had your hand up. Yeah, uh, I was going to say what you said. I was going to land back off when you said yeah. it was an idol god. It represented the Egyptian god Hawthor, right. which was the cattle Yeah, god, there you so, go. I mean, mm. Yeah. Why would the Most High have a plague of frogs? Go back in Egyptian history. Right. They had That's a frog. A frog every, god. Yeah. yeah. They had an idol god made into frogs. Huh? Huh. Exactly. Mm. And you know. That's that little frog, Salaki. Yeah. That little funny frog, that mine, that Kiki mine, that is an idol god. That's an idol god. Right. right. That's out there, yeah. So, so you think, why would the, the poor frog, what the, what the frog have to do with <laughs> It's because. They used the frog as idol god. So the Most High was really attacking, attacking them. The demonic force in the in the form of an idol god. Come, come. Because remember, every idol god is backed by what? A, a demonic entity. Okay. That's what moves it. So why is Christianity so uh, so prevalent? So widespread because of the demonic force that moves it. Come, come, come. So the idol gods in the Roman Catholic Church—they're nothing, right? They're nothing but wood and stone, right? Right. So what, what can move these idol gods uh, and this philosophy to a point where over a billion people are in the Roman Catholic Church? The mm. demonic forces behind it. Come. That's what gives them power. That power, right. Yeah. The prince of the power of the, the prince air. prince of the power of the air, right, demonic Come. forces. Mm -hmm. So the same thing, uh, w uh, you know, the, the, the Egyptians had the fishes of the sea. Mm -hmm. So the Most High brought the, the blood in the water, remember? He said, Moses, take your staff and put it in the water. The water turns blood, right? Right. Yeah. All the fish were caught up dead and everything. And also they were, they were idolizing the water. They had idols. They had, they had all kinds of idols, man. Isis, sun god Ra. Yep. Okay. Set. <laughs> well, Set. 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 Yeah. yeah. Set. Right. All these idol gods they had. And so the most I, those ten plagues were against the idol gods. And that's what he had them for. And so... Uh, Yahawashai, being our mediator, uh, helped to settle a dispute that, w that the Most High had with us. Right. It was a conflict. And we broke the covenant. It says, um, and between two or more people by acting as an intermediating you know, force or go between the conflict of parties. So Yahawashai was a mediator. So Yahawashai had a duty to come. In the flesh, sent from the most side, he had to do what he had to do. That's what he told the disciples. Right? Look, and uh, uh, the most side raised this temple in three days and three nights, this temple is going to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Right? And then what happened? The temple was uh, Yahweh's shot. Okay? He is that temple that had to be sacrificed for the sins of the, of the nation of Israel. And so that's that's what Yahweh Shai was talking about. And if Yahweh Shai didn't do that, then we wouldn't have the grace that we have now. Right. Con? Con. We wouldn't have the grace that we have now. So go ahead, uh, start from uh, 8 and 6 again one more time. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 6. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much more also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which is established upon better promises. How about that? So we need a better covenant. So he's the mediator uh, of a better covenant. 
Okay? Time. Now, not that the old covenant wasn't good. It's just that what we didn't do what? We didn't keep it. Okay? Time. Is that everything the most I bring to us, of course, is is is, is spiritual, is great, is good for us, mm -hmm. right? Right. So was that old covenant bad? No, we just didn't keep it. That was the problem. Okay? Go ahead, up. Verse 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. How about that? So we need a second covenant. Con? Con. Uh, in other words, covenant meaning what? Agreement. Mm -hmm. We needed a second, another agreement. And agree, a covenant means two or more parties coming together to make a contract. Agreeing on promises, stipulations, privileges, and responsibilities. Which we're going to show you in the scriptures. Israel... Uh, what well, we did come out, of, come out of Egypt into the wilderness, Moses gave us the covenant of the Most High, and we agreed to it. Right. And we, we agreed to the promises. We agreed to the uh, uh, stipulations. Mm -hmm. Isn't there stipulations on what to eat and what not to eat? <laughs> Isn't there stipulations on uh, uh, the, the dietary law, the civil law, the mm -hmm. sacrificial law? There's stipulations on what to do and what not to do. And we agreed to the whole thing, huh? Because Moses read it to us. Okay? Uh, also, our privileges. See, as Israelites, because we're the chosen of the Most High, we were given privileges too, huh? <laughs> right? We were given certain privileges. Come. We're that nation. We're that great nation. Okay? The Most High gave us power. He gave us spiritual power. He gave us uh, great talents and gifts, spiritual gifts. The other nations didn't have all this. Right. They come, come. And, 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 and the Most High protected us. Remember when we came out of Egypt, Yahushai would protect us, right? Fire by night, cloud by day. Mm -hmm. And any nation, what kind of privilege? That's a great privilege, man. Nobody has that. Right? right. Nobody, no other, what other nation has that? So my scripture says, what one nation is like unto thee, O nation of Israel? None. <laughs> it's none like, that's why they're all jealous. They're jealous of us, why they want to kill us. It is so, it's out of plain jealousy. And so that's why in the wilderness, the Most High had to protect us. Remember, we had to go to war in the wilderness. Huh? They were coming after us in the wilderness. We weren't even in Israel yet, in the land of Canaan yet. They had to come after us. They said, no, we can't let these people uh, come together and serve the Most High. We've got to destroy them now. Same thought Esau has, even now. You think he wants us to be redeemed and, and, and come together? la -a. That's why he put so many flight. He sell Israelite camps out. He, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He's on. He's on the job, huh? The, the, the elites of Esau, the Rosicrucians and, and the Masonic, you know, heads of Esau, they're on the job. They sell brothers out quick because they don't want Israel to come together. We coming together means the end of them. That's the only thing it can mean, right? That's right. Because That's the right. earth was given into the hand of oh, the wicked. Yeah, into the hand of wicked, but it's right. given to Israel's sake. Right. It was given to us. So the coming together of Israel is the end of them. They know this. So they're going to work like hard to keep us divided, to keep us worshiping idols, Turn. to keep us at odds with one another. Turn. Okay? Turn. They're working hard. Over, they're working diligent. Right? And they're praying to Satan every day. Remember, Scripture say they pray to Satan every day. He's our accuser. So they, 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 they go to Satan, the elites go to Satan, says, okay, who do we got to go to next to sell out? Understand? Next thing you know is, well, that camp over there, or well, that camp over there, right? Come? Come. Because they want to keep us divided up, because they know it's the end of their time. Last day, they know this, right? So, so for, for the, seven, the seventh verse, right? For if the first covenant had been faultless, that means... If the first covenant was made perfect. Now, of course, in the translation, of course, Esau puts the word faultless. But does that mean the first covenant had mistakes in it? No. 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 It doesn't mean that. But that's Esau's word that he puts there, right? Mm -hmm. So can the most out, when the most out does something, there, there's no mistakes out. Right? It doesn't run with the first covenant. So if there was a mistake, the mistake was with who? The people. Us. <laughs> yeah, the people. Right. There was no mistake in, in the covenant the most I gave it. It was the people. That's the people. Exactly. Understand? So 
this invention, no place had been fought, sought for the second. So, so now why a second covenant? Because we broke the first one. If you break your agreement in your mortgage, don't they have something called a second mortgage? Yeah, they have a second mortgage. And you, what, re-agree on another mortgage, huh? Because why? What did you do? You didn't pay your, you didn't make your payments for the first one. So, so they give you another chance, a second agreement. Pretty much a second covenant, right? You get a second mortgage. You get a second chance. So the same thing with the Most High is doing to us. So what the Most High is doing is just bringing another covenant in to add to, right? He's really just adding to the first covenant, right? He's not going to do away with the covenant. He's going to add to it, Come. Come. And we're going to see what that is when Yahweh Shai redeems us, brings us into the wilderness, and he's going to bring us the new covenant. Okay? It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one deal. <laughs> Mosai and Israel. And Yahweh Shai is going to be right there in the middle and say, okay, Israel, what you going to do? And that's why he says all the ones who are rebels and rebellious, they're going to be put to death. Because if, if you don't keep your, your, your agreement with your mortgage, what does Esau do? Well, he cut you off, don't he? Right. So the same thing the most is going to do. He's going to cut you off. Right? So that's what it means. There's no sort for the second. So all the first covenant did was it didn't do anything. We were at fault, and we made the mistake in not keeping the covenant. So it just it just wasn't enough. Put it like that. Okay? Okay. We needed more. And this, this is the way the coming of Yahweh Shai represents. Go ahead up. Verse 8. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. How about that, a new covenant? So, of course, in the translation, Esau puts new covenant like you're going to do away with the old and all that. Yeah, the, the old is, 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 is the old covenant. But remember, what did Yahweh say? That's why you always got to study to, to ensure that self-approved. Mm -hmm. Yahweh said, I came not to do what? Do sure. away with the right. law or what the prophets wrote. Tom. So is he going to do with the old covenant? No. Well, uh, He's adding to the covenant. He's going to bring more to it. Come. Come. This is what the New Testament is all about. This is why you have the Old Testament Israelites. They can't they can't uh, Take on the, the gospel or the New Testament or the New Covenant. They can't take it on. Because it requires what? It requires a higher level of faith. Which it does. Right. It requires a higher level of faith. See, in the Old Testament, your faith was here. Your faith was here. And you knew that if you broke the, the law that you can sacrifice an animal and all that stuff, right? You knew it. Cool. That's, that's an easy thing, right? I sin, I sacrifice an animal and get repent, you know, get saved from it. You sin, I sacrifice an animal and get saved. And then we're all like that. But now Yahweh tries to say, okay, I gotta and the most I told Yahweh said, we gotta put a stop to this. Mm -hmm. Otherwise they won't stop. So now it's on a high level now. See, so we as a people gotta come up on another level. See, the old covenant is here, but the new covenant is here. <laughs> Can you attain to that level now? That's why the Yahweh says it's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. <laughs> a lot of brothers are not going to be able to accept the next level of faith. All right? In Yahweh Shai. They're not going to be able to accept the next level. Or, or, or sisters or brothers. It doesn't don't matter. Or Israelite camps or schools. They're not going to be able to accept it. And then it doesn't matter how long you knew if you were Israelite. Can you accept <laughs> what Yahweh Shai is putting down there? See? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll eat yeah. Even even in the um, book of Isaiah, um, that's why I understand with the Old Testament Israelites, he was tired of the sacrifices and everything. Right. In um, Isaiah chapter one, uh, and I'm bringing us Isaiah chapter one, um, uh, verse eleven through uh, thirteen. It says, "To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me?" saith Yahweh, "I am full of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts." Tell me that one more time. Tell me that. Isaiah chapter 1, uh, starting at verse 11. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. To what yeah. purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith Yahweh? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts 
and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. Right. When, when you come to appear before me, who have required this at your hand to tread the courts? Bring no more blame no oblations. More. Mm -hmm. Incense is abomination unto me. He said it's vain oblations. Most I don't accept it no more. Come. Go ahead. The new moons and the Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with it. It is iniquity even. Now, does the most I want to do with the new moons? No. He's saying I want to accept it from you. Come. But the most right. I still keep his new moons in the spiritual world, right? Come. He still keep his Sabbaths. You're not going to keep it. The most I still keeping his commandments, right? Come. Come. Because then Yahweh Shai said, well, I, I can't. I got to have faith in myself. Right? Come. If you don't have faith in me, but Yahweh Shai... He can't deny himself, can he? No. Most high can't deny himself. Huh. So the most high keeps his high holy days, the Sabbath, even though we don't do it. Okay, go ahead, Doc. Verse 14, your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hated. They are troubling he to what? me. what? I hate it. Most high said what? I hate it. Uh, the most high said he's showing you he hates something. Mm -hmm. He said, I hate your new moons and your Sabbaths and, and your high holy days that you come and bring a vain oblation. In other words, because you bring it, but in, inside your heart, you're wicked as hell. That's why he said it. Go ahead, Come. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hated. They are a trouble unto me. I am worried to bear them. When you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes. <laughs> and, and then in the churches, what do they do? They pray, right? Mm -hmm. And now everybody stand up. You got a thousand or whatever kind of congregation that got five thousand. They all pray. The most I said, I don't even hear them pray. Right. I'm running. I'm, I'm going back to my throne. He said, I will go back to my throne until you acknowledge your offense. Yes. That's what he said. So like, on top of that, they gave you some ham in the back of the yes. church too. <laughs> so this is why he said he don't accept it. Right. What did it tell you about a wicked man's prayer? It's, it's an abomination. An abomination. Yep. So, so in the churches. Right, they're about to have, you know, they had it on Easter probably, they have it every Christmas, you know, and these churches have these uh, elaborate uh, parties, not parties, but elaborate gatherings, right, because it's Christmas, they think that's the Shai's birthday, Easter, they think that's when he rose and, all, and so forth, right, Mother's Day, I'm sure the churches had all kinds of, right, Come. but they got ham there, shellfish there, Come. right, woman now, they twerk in the church, they do all they wear oh, pants man. and everything, so the most of them, I won't accept that. That's right. It's an abomination. abomination. So even when they pray, it's an abomination. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead, huh? I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. <laughs> that about that. Right, full of blood. He will not hear your prayer. So let's think, when you pray, you, these Christians go home, and these Muslims, and these Roman Catholics, these churches, and they go home, and they pray, and they think the most I heard their prayer. And I got news for you. A lot of times, uh, you know, you got people who are like sickly or whatever, and they, they and they pray, right, in the name of their church or the name of their, their God, right? Right. And they get healed. But was it the most high? No. My eye. It wasn't the most high. Satan heals too. Do you understand what I'm saying? So in their minds, I'm healed. God delivered me. Yeah, well, what God? <laughs> right. Was it the creator of heaven and earth? Was it Yahweh? Or was it Satan? Satan's a god too. But he's not the most side. The difference is Satan would heal you from your sicknesses and everything, huh? And you think the most side did it. And the most side didn't do nothing. He said, Remember, he said, I would not hear that prayer. It's an abomination, so I'm not going to accept it. Yeah, and these it. people get healed with cancer and all that. They think it's the most side. It's not. Mm -hmm. The most side said, Love not the world. <laughs> now they're the things in the world. If any man love the world, then they're enemy to me. So why would he heal you, gun? Is Satan not? There's a difference. There is a difference, man. Yeah. Yeah, but um, a lot of church folks, they're not gonna believe that Satan healed. Them. No, of course not. <laughs> so, so what? They won't say it like that. No, no, no they won't no, say it like no. that. They say God healed them. They yeah. say, yeah, they'll no. say God, which yeah. is Satan. Yeah. Gun. Yeah. Okay. And then they'll, and then they'll, oh, they'll say my God. Right. Like they own, like they own, maybe not your God, but my God. Go to show us the demon when it, when they mm -hmm. talk like that. Yeah, demon, because there's only one Most High. Right. So what do you mean your God? Okay, so uh, that's a demon talking through them. Okay? And so of course, yeah, the Christians are gonna say they, 
They're not going to believe that Satan is healed. They're not going to believe that. Okay. But it is. Look, it, you got cancer or tuberculosis or any kind of disease or whatever. And you go to the doctors. These doctors are what? Wizards. Yeah, they're nothing but a bunch of wizards, demons too, representing yeah. Satan. Because their technology is what? Based off witchcraft. Witchcraft. That's why they got that emblem, right? The snakes and all that, right? The medical emblem they, they got, right? Mm -hmm. It's all witchcraft. Based off the science, well, stemming from ancient Egypt, Babylon, mm -hmm. the Greeks and the Romans, all up, up until today, right? Oh, yeah. So they got to cut you open and take the cancer out. Is that, is that what the most I? Is that the most I? No. That's Satan. Yeah, I got a cousin just went through that. Yeah. Now, now you may say, well, the most I give me another chance or whatever. Okay, you may say that. But now, if you say the most I give me another chance, okay, so then take that and then I return back to the most I. Come. Okay, so, okay, you might have been healed. That might have been through Satan's technology or whatever. You saw technology, which is witchcraft. But now take that and return back to the most high. And repent. And right? repent. And repent. Yeah, that's what you're exactly. supposed to do. That's the difference. <laughs> that's the difference, right. Yeah. Understand? So, yeah, you can still thank the most high for that. But and even though it was through, you saw witchcraft. Right. But take it now and return back to the most yeah. high. And acknowledge your and offenses. Acknowledge your offenses. Yeah, acknowledge right. your offenses. If not, then, you know, right. he's not dealing with he's you. He's not dealing with you. Okay? So you got to look at it like that. Huh? Mm -hmm. It's, it's sort, of, sort of a level. So... Scripture says, all men have not faith. All right? There's different levels of faith. Even the disciples had different levels of faith, though, right? Huh. The 12 didn't have the, the faith that Peter had, that Paul had, right? Paul said, I'm the chief apostle. Right, Con? Con. And, Paul, and he wasn't what? An original disciple. But he became the chief. <laughs> Most diligent of them all. Right? And, and Peter became the leader. Right? Uh, of, of the disciples. But Yahweh made him that. But they, he was uh, faithful. And remember, you had John. That was the disciple who, who loved Yahweh Was on his, on his chest all the time. Mm -hmm. And the disciples got jealous. They said, Why is he always on your chest? Why is he always leaning on you? Yahweh Shai said, what is that to you? Just do what you're supposed to do. Right? Okay, so there's different levels of faith. So now, um, read 8 one more time. Hebrews 6 and 8. This is the book of Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Okay, so a new covenant is going to be made. Okay, go ahead. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them out by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. So it's not going to be according to that covenant, meaning because in that covenant they broke it. Hmm. Okay. Not that the covenant was, was, was wrong. It wasn't wrong. It was because we broke it. See, because even, like you said, again, when you're buying a house, you make a, uh, an agreement, and they, they um, pretty much show you all the figures of what you got to pay and everything, right? And the interest rate and everything, right, Con? So you agree. And even right there, if you disagree, you got to do it right there, <laughs> right? But if you agree to it, then, of course, you sign, Right? You sign it. It's done deal. Now here it is, you know, five, six, seven years later, you broke that agreement. So now, that, uh, there, there has to be a new agreement made. Not that all the agreement was wrong, right? Just that you didn't, you didn't make the payments. <laughs> right. So you didn't make the payments. There wasn't no wrong with the agreement. You, you agreed to it. There was nothing wrong with it. You didn't make the payments. So now you got to come with another agreement. You try it all over again. Come. Come. So this is what the Mosai is doing. And he had, and this time he had to bring a mediator because the Mosai was fed up. And this is why when you read Romans 10 and 1, just read that very right quick. Romans 10 and 1. All 
right? Uh, hold up, hold up. Wait, man. Um, I was holding nothing. I know I was holding nothing. It's the late one. Should I tie that in? Uh, yeah, it's 11, right? Well, no, not, not 11. Yeah. Um, is, it, is it Romans 10? Yeah, get Romans 10, 10 and 1. 10 and 1. Yes, this is the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to the Most High for Israel is that they might be saved. How about that? Is everybody going to be saved? No, that they might be saved. Some mm -hmm. of our people, and not everybody's going to be saved, right? Right. All right. Uh, most, a lot of our people are going to be saved through the regeneration. Con? They're coming back to the regeneration. Okay? Con. So not everybody's going to be saved this first trip. They're coming back to regeneration. I know the scripture says all Israel shall be saved, meaning through the regeneration. Right. Okay. Okay. All right, go ahead. Huh? Verse 2. For I bear them record that they have a zeal for the Most High, but not according to knowledge. See, it's not according to knowledge. So what knowledge are they using? The philosophies of the world. Mm. Religion. So, so our people have a zeal. That's why, you know, mostly all the churches that are set up are for what? For our people. Our people, there's, there's a church in every corner. Come. In every ghetto slums where our people live at is, is always churches. You know? Two or three, four or five, ten churches on one block. Especially if it's a long block. Right? <laughs> and they all name something different, right? So they have a zeal for the most side, which we do, right? But it's not according to knowledge. Going up. For they being ignorant of the most high's righteousness... And going about to establish their own righteousness. Well, I'm a Pentecostal. No, brother, you're an Israelite. No, I'm a Pentecostal. Brother, your nation is, is Israelite. No, I'm, a, I'm a, a Baptist. I'm from the Baptist church of such and such. <laughs> See what I'm talking about? God. That's what they do. And they get, they get mad at you if you tell them that you're, not, that you're an Israelite and they tell you that there's something else. You, you tell them a nationality and they're giving you a religion. Mm -hmm. See how you saw God? So it's not according to knowledge. Right, go on. Huh? Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of the Most High. You haven't submitted yourself, right? So the obedience is everything, man. The obedience is everything with the Most High. Submit. Submit to it. Because again, when you come, when, when a, a bank has a loan for you, for your house, and he, they tell you what all, all the figures are and the interest rates and everything is, you got to you submit to it, don't you? That's why you sign. Mm -hmm. You sign in your name. That means you're submitting to what the what 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 the policy is. Come. Come. If you don't submit to it, then you have your chance right there to rebel against it. But you want that house, so you submit yourself to it. That means if the payments are two thousand dollars a month and you want that house. And you know damn well, more than likely, you can't afford it. <laughs> yeah. But you submitted yourself to it, and you signed. Now you got to keep it. Otherwise, you're going to lose it, right? Right. Yeah, go ahead, Al. Yeah, when you, when you read down here to the word righteousness, they, they, they have no clue what that means. No. You know, they don't, they don't want to go back to Deuteronomy 6, no. 5 to see exactly what it means. Right, right. You know, they want, to, they want it to mean something else. Right. That's why with a Christian, you can't. They don't understand that righteousness means going back to the law. Right. You know? Simple. Right. Isn't that simple? Because because what is righteousness? You're keeping the commandments. Keep commandments. Right. That's right. It's, it's not doing so-called good deeds in the world. Because you got to understand what's righteousness with the most high. It's the keeping the commandments. Keep the commandments. Right. But people do good deeds in the world. They think that's righteous yeah. <clears throat> because it's of the world. Because most I tell you, even even a sinner, he'll he'll obey, you know, he's a sinner, but he'll obey to wickedness, and uh, he'll obey to another sinner out there, right? Right. So uh, yeah, again, you're right. You're correct about that. Go ahead, up. And um, oh, do we finish Romans ten? Uh, one to uh, one to three. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, one to three. That was it. Yeah, that yeah, was it. it. That was it. Okay. And uh, if you go back to Hebrews 8, okay, 8 and 10. All right, this is the book of Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 10. For this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel. In those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws 
into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a power, and they shall be to me a people. Right, okay. And so then now, the Most High showed his essence. When you go to Jeremiah 31, and the Most High showed Jeremiah the same thing, Con. Jeremiah was the prophet Con. of the Most High, and the Most High showed Jeremiah the same thing, okay? So that was Hebrews, and that was Paul who gave us the letter to the Hebrews. Right. So now this is Jeremiah showing you what? That the disciples and the apostles were what? Were reading the Old Testament. They were reading the book. Right. At that time. Exactly. Okay? They were reading the book at that time. Okay, go ahead, Doc. Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 31. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with them, with their fathers, in the day that I took them out by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which by covenant they break. Although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahweh. You're my wife. See, you broke my contract. You broke the vows. Good. That's what he's saying. That's mm -hmm. why he used the word husband. Good. That's why he used the word husband, because we're the most high's wife. Right. So, so the most high's saying, just like a husband and wife, or a wife break the, the vows of a husband, most I'm saying, you broke the vows or the covenant that I made with you. Mm. Okay. Same difference, Same difference, yep. Understand? So, now, what the Most High is saying, okay, we're going to try to restore another covenant. But first things first. One, I got to punish you. <laughs> right? I got to punish you. And two, I got to bring my son into the earth to be a sacrifice. Because I'm not talking to you no more. So why do the husband and wife separate? Do they talk that much? No. Not that much no more, right? Not. So, so now the only way we can get to the most side is through <laughs> the Mashiach. The, the only way the most side is going to talk to us. I don't understand these Old Testament Israelites. I really don't. But it's not, it's not, it's not happening, is it? It's not going to happen. Not going to happen, huh? They think that they're going to go straight to the most side of the most side. I said, I'm going back to my throne. I'm not talking to you. As a matter of fact, I don't even hear your prayer. Come? Come. I don't right. hear your prayer. And you got you got congregation of Old Testament Israelites that are big, huh? I don't hear that. Understand? Because they blinded. They blinded. Come. But, of course, the most side has mercy. So he's going to bring some of them out of that. And they're going to turn to your house shot. Con? Con. Con. Just like he's going to bring some of our people out of the churches, out of the Muslim world, out of, you know, out of the Buddhist world. <laughs> Can I bring this free all that stuff? Yeah, go ahead. Uh. The book of Hebrew, um, Slaki, the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 7. Let me start up at verse 5. Even so, then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Mm -hmm. And if by grace there is no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. Right, right. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. Right. So who cares? Okay, so mm -hmm. the Mosiah said it's by, by grace. Mm -hmm. So for a brother to say, well, I'm better than you. See all this competition thing? Uh, I keep the commandment better than you are, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm greater than you. Mosiah said, no, it's not of works. Right. right? Right? How about that? It's, it's who the Most High chose. Yeah, the Most High wants you to begin to rehearse the righteous commandments. Yes. But a brother can't say, well, uh, I've done better than you in this, so I'm better than you, and so I should be over you and all that stuff. No. <laughs> no, that's not what Yahweh said. That's why Yahweh brought that new covenant, right? Right. He said, here go the parable of the laborers. He brought the disciples the parable of the laborers. And he said, he said, look, go out there and you see uh, 
the men of Israel milling around in, in the malls and in the shopping areas and the marketplaces. He said, convince, try to convince them to come to serve, to serve in my house. But he, but he gave a stipulation. They're all going to receive a penny. That's the stipulation he gave. Mm -hmm. They're all going to receive a penny. And so why, why everybody receive a penny? So in that parable of labor, why everybody receive a penny? Because nobody's going to be greater than the next. So if, if, if one brother says, well, I came in uh, before you. I've been in the truth 10 years before you. I should get more than you. you know, I said, no, that's not what I told you. I said, I'm only hiring you for that penny. <laughs> right? So nobody's going to get more than anybody because you can't, you have no control when the most I bring you in. Good. Do you have control of it? No. Not at all. So but, uh, another brother can't <coughs> help the most I'm bringing him in now, and I've been in almost 40 years, he can't help that. Right. It's when the most I, when Yahweh shot right? Exactly. So he said, we all going to get that same thing. Good. Okay? But like the Old Testament Israelites, right. they're, they're, they're blinded. Right. Now, we're going to read that a little bit further in verse yeah. 7. What then Israel hath not obtained, which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. The rest were blinded. Come. According as it is written, God hath given them the sleep of slumber. See, they can't see it because the Most High ain't opening their eyes. Yeah. You know, so when we can see it, it's because of the Spirit that's in us, that opened us right. up to that to this truth. So when you see an Old Testament Israelite not getting it. That's because the Most High is blinded their eyes, and only a remnant is going to be saved on this side. Yeah, two thirds got to perish. Exactly, exactly. So right? They're yeah. doing the same thing as the Pharisees kept uh, kept doing the uh, sacrifice uh, vices. Yeah, and they was put away. Yeah. So that's what the Old Testament is doing now. That's what they yeah. still hold idols yeah, in their that's heart. That's still in their mind. It's still in their heart. It's still yeah. in their mind. That's right. why uh, they still have that veil okay. that's, that's over them. That's over them. Okay. Uh, remember, Yahweh Shai. When Yahweh Shai was crucified, right? You know what happened to the veil of the temple? Huh? It was torn apart. Right. The spirit took it away. Right. So there's so now uh, we can be now in these days we can be open. Our minds can be open to the new covenant, the new gospel, right? right of Yahweh shot. Mm -hmm. But because you have some of our people that want to remain Right? They want to remain. And remember, it's of the mercy of the Most High if he wake you up anyway. Right. Exactly. But he said some of the Old Testaments, they want to remain that way. And they, that veil is not taken. So you can, some of the Old Testament Israelites, you could teach for days and they'll never get, they'll never get it. Because the Most High said, no, I, I, don't, want, I don't want him to wake up. Yeah. Right. God the simple as that. He gave them the spirit <laughs> right. of blindness. Of blindness. You know, it's up to him yeah. to give us that eye salve so exactly. we can see. That's why I said, whenever you come into a city and uh, you begin to teach in that city and they don't receive you, shake the dust off your feet. Right. Because if they're blind, they're blind. The blind lead the blind, they both should fall to the pit. That's if they're right. blind, they're blind. You, nothing you can do. Huh. That's why sometimes, you know, when I start teaching somebody within the first maybe 10 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes, I can see, you know what I'm saying? If, if, if there's something there. But after that, not that I just turn around and go, you know, I don't go, but, you know, I, I, I sort of say, okay, this, this brother ain't going to get it. Or this, or this sister ain't going to get it. And then the Spirit shows me, okay, you know, you... um ain't ready. Yeah. I mean, you diligently taught them, and you just, there now, just listening to what they got to say, and, you know, and then, and then after a while, you say, okay, Shalom, I got to go, and... Right. You know, because you see that it's it's not... Yeah. Right. Understand? Right. Oh, what, about, what about the, the brothers... Sister that said you gotta have patience out here. <laughs> With that, what, are they, what about that? Because my take is it's not always about patience. Yeah. You understand? Because like you said, the most high has to wake them up. Right. Right. And we and can't always throw this patience around. You can't, right. Exactly. Say it's about because patience. if a, if a, within that within that time span of you trying to teach somebody, talk to somebody, you could always say, Look, we have a class, you can come to the class. See, that's where that patience come in. Okay, uh, well, um, you may not have time to hear everything I'm saying or whatever. Well, come to the class, man. Right. See, if a person, if the most I want to whip somebody up, he going to put that spirit into him. Okay, I want more. Yep. Well, what's your class, huh? Even though you couldn't be there for, for a couple of hours teaching them, maybe you only had five minutes. Maybe you only had ten minutes. But we got a class, 19 lamps on the lane, you can come. 
right? Or the, you know, any other camps that's out here, you give them the address, they're going to come up. Because what? The most High is waking them up. The spirit of truth is, is, uh, is, is waking them up. So right. they're they going to do everything they can to, to come get it. See, so, so sometimes you can tell. And, and again, even if a brother says, well, I can't make it that week. I can come the following week. or then, then, Okay. Come. So when they say you got to have patience, okay. The Most High is merciful. And I tell them, yeah, the Most High is long-suffering. Most High, Most High got patience. He's waiting on you. <laughs> Sometimes I put it on them, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, right. the Most High is long-suffering. He's waiting on you, huh? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's up to you. Now that you know the truth, God told you. <laughs> so now when you put it back on them, he's been playing. You got to put it back on them, right? Okay? Come. So, uh, that was that. And then, um, let's see. Exodus Okay, Exodus um, 24 and 1 This is the book of Exodus chapter 24 verse 1 mm -hmm. And he said unto Moses Come up unto Yahweh, thou and Aaron, Nabat, Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. And Moses alone shall come near Yahweh, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall they, the people, go up with him. And Moses came and told the people all the words of Yahweh, and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which Yahweh said, we will do. They said what? We, we will, will do. do it. We will do it. What is that? When you say you're going to do it, that's the what? You covenant. Yes. You made a promise. You made a promise. Yes. Right. The covenant. You made the promise. What right. about that? Huh? We, we did that. Huh? We said that. See? Because Moses went up to the mountain, and, he, and most of us said, okay, bring the 70 officers. Right? Uh, you had Joshua and them came up, Aaron and them, the right. priest came up with them. But he said, Moses, just you come up to me and have them wait there, right? So, he, so the Most High even had more witnesses, right? And then Moses, once he got the information from the Yahushua, because it was Yahushua, once he got the information from Most High, Yahushua, gave it to Moses. Moses gave it to the 70 elders, officers, yep. right? And here they come back down the mountain. And now... Now they're going to give it to the nation of Israel. Now, when you read it, it may sound like it was done like in a few minutes. No. <laughs> that thing took hours, huh? Because he's giving them what? The covenant. The covenant, right? He's giving them what? 613 laws. <laughs> laws. <laughs> he's giving the laws and the commandments. So it took all day, huh? And, and y'all remember reading when Ezra wrote, uh, read the uh, commandments to the people, right? Mm -hmm. Have to come from the Babylonian captivity. It went from what? It was about, went from sun up to like 6 o'clock in the morning to like what? 3 o'clock in the afternoon, yeah. something like that. Right. Understand? So, so, can you sit in the classroom for that, that many hours? No. How many hours was that? 6, <laughs> 7, 8, Long 9, time, 10, right? 11, yeah. 12, 1, 2, 3, you know, about nine hours? It's a work day. <laughs> Can you sit in the class for nine hours out? Why I just read your law to you? Only in, only, only in school. Brother's going to be like, come on, bro. I got to go. <laughs> come on. <laughs> After about two laws, right? <laughs> go. go. All fidgety. You're fidgety, getting up and down. He was forced, like when we was in high school. He right. was forced to sit in there for eight hours a right. day. Exactly. <laughs> Guess what's going to happen this time? We're going to be, again, we're going to the wilderness. Yeah. And this time, you're not going to have cell phones to look at. There ain't going to be none. There ain't going to be no TV. You're going to sit there for nine hours out just hearing the commandments all day, all day long. Now, you see why it's better for the most side to isolate us? Because there's no distractions. You're distracted now. You're too distracted with all the, you know, you're worrying about your girlfriend or so-called girlfriend. Oh. She's ready to leave you anyway. You're worried about, you know, your bank account, you know. Esau going to take that money anyway. <laughs> After a while, it's not going to mean nothing. 
But you're still so distracted. You about your car, about this, about that. Keep it up with the Joneses. Huh? Keep it up with the Joneses. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Most of the there's no way I can get to them like this. I gotta take them out of this condition and set them apart and bring them back to the wilderness, the desert area, okay, and then deal with them one on one. Right. That's why he separated the nation. That's how he does it. That's how he does it. No. See? And I, I, think I can't wait till that happens. <laughs> <laughs> you get away from these devils. Yeah, because you're going to have, and you're going to, most likely going to bring a lot of ones that's, that's rebels, he going to deliver them. Because in the wilderness, that's where you're going to kill them. <laughs> See, some are coming for the ride just to be the sacrifice. Most of cool, ain't he? Brother don't know he's coming just for the ride. So he can do most of cold that way. They come. come. Didn't that happen when we come out of Egypt? Some of them just came, were delivered just for, for the ride. So that in the wilderness. Be destroyed in the wilderness. Be destroyed in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Okay? Most of I'm going to have mercy on my word. But he's going to bring us to covenant. He's going to bring us and, 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 and purge out the rebels. That's the ones who are I want to go back to America. That's what he did in Egypt. You know, I had a house. I had two cars. <laughs> That's the I had a good job. That's gone. Okay? I can eat steak and all that. You know, what the I can go to the Boston Market, you know, have a, have a nice chicken dinner. So all that murmuring going to come back. Good. See, so now go to Ezekiel, hold that, go to Ezekiel 20. I want to get the hell out of here, man. God. So they ain't not going to say, Moses, get us out. They're going to say, Pastor Pia, get me out of this place, man. Get out of here. Yeah, so that's what they're going to say, y'all. 20 and 34. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 34. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein you were scattered. See, that's all the countries. Are scattered. Was, yeah, right. see, all the countries were scattered. That's everywhere. That's all over earth, right? <laughs> Go on. With the mighty hand and with the stretched out arm and with fury poured out. How the fury meant it is going to be some death. Right? Fury pour it out. Go on. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. So he's going to bring us into the wilderness. Go on. And there will I plead with you face to face. Face to face. So he has to bring you into the wilderness to plead with you. He can't plead with you when you're distracted. Right. Are you going to listen to the most side now? No. You, some of you can't even be in a class for an hour. Because remember, when, when, when a... a, a Legitimate prophet or disciple of the Most High teaching the word. Who's who's really teaching? Yahweh Shai. So you can't listen to Yahweh Shai through the word for an hour, not alone nine hours. Because what? After about an hour, you're gonna be thinking, okay, uh, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I got I gotta wash clothes, I gotta do that, I got things to do, I gotta meet my woman somewhere, you know, I gotta go to the movies. I got a play I got to go to, Broadway play. <laughs> so you're going to be thinking of things you got to do after about an hour. But when you're in the wilderness, you get to think about it now because all things are going to be gone. They're going to be gone. So, Elder, will this be a part of Jacob's trouble? And yeah. The wilderness? That, that, yeah. That, that's, that'll be part of the Jacob's trouble. Okay. That'll be... That'll be during the uh, tribulation period. During the tribulation yeah. period. Put it like that. It'll be during the Come tribulation on. period. Come on. Gotcha. Okay, go ahead, Al. Uh, verse 36. Like I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness and the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith Yahweh. So the most I say what? Like I did back then? I'm going to do it again. It's coming back. You know, most I don't change. Only, you know... We are afraid of change, people in the flesh. But the most high hasn't changed, huh? Then, like I plead with you back then, I'm going to plead with you again in the wilderness. Coming out of a, the second Egypt, which is America. Come? Come. Come. Same way. And these niggas are going to rebel. <laughs> They're going to mm. rebel. And the most high will say, Yakanon, take your sword and go chop that nigga's head off. That's what's going to happen, huh? And guess what? It's one of Yakanon's best friends who live in Middletown on his block with him. Mm -hmm. Then what? You got you gotta be obedient, do what the most I say. Okay. Take take this sword, go chop his damn head off. 
could be your own mother. That's right. It could be your own mother, huh? Right? Just that cold, then. Just that cold. But the, because these things are going to manifest themselves, so the most I can see who is who going to submit themselves and who going to be obedient. He says, "Look, out of a whole house, one of a family, uh, two of a family, one of a city." Right? So you might be the one or two of your family, but everybody else, you got to put to death. God. In your own household. God. <laughs> it's cold. So people don't, they don't know the, they don't know your house shy it's, it's, it's amazing they the church they don't know the house shy is a cold calculated killer of the most high in righteousness come in righteousness he said in righteousness I does judge and I will make war right and, and anytime there's a war there's death there's, there's no way you will have a war there's nobody die come there's just no way out there. Okay, and any kind of type of revolution is going to be death. And right. how is Shai's bringing it? And, exactly. he's, and he's got vengeance in his heart. Right. Come. He's pissed off. He's pissed off. To right. what they did to him. Right. On the cross, they <laughs> pierced him. Yeah, he got, he got some personal issues too. He got some vinegar. Right. He got some things he's got to settle with some people. Right. That's what he said, right? You know? And he said that those people are going to be back on the earth, even the ones Come. that pierced him. Right. They're going to get that smoke from him it. personally. Kind of, and they were like, oh, your blood is on us and our children. Yeah, yeah. right. You're like, okay, you accepted it, so he's yeah. going to make them pay for that. He's going to make them pay for it, huh? You know? It's like, coming, man. It's the coming. Church, the church always going to say, where's the love? Right. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah, that's what the church That is love. Like, that's going to yeah. be love. They don't want that type of love, though. <laughs> yeah. They want somebody to hold their hands while they continue to sin. Yeah. And break out God's law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Because there's, there's love in marriage, right? Yeah. And there's pain. There's pain too. There's war. There's conflict. <laughs> yeah. Right? You got to build that marriage. You got to build that marriage. No. Right. So this is what Yahweh tried to bring it in. Go ahead, uh, read over the seven verse. Uh, this is what I get. Yeah. Yeah. Read, Exodus read, 24. Read 37. Yeah. Y'all not in Ezekiel no more? Ezekiel 20, Ezekiel 20 37. 37. Yeah. Thank you. It's a water. I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. There it is again, right? So it's that same covenant that we read in uh, Hebrews 8 and also Jeremiah 31 and 31 on down, right, Con? Con. He's going to bring them to that bond of the covenant. Oh, yeah. Con. And so what Yahweh Shai is going to do is now he's going to bring, he said, a new covenant. But what he's going to do is add to, of course, the covenant that we had come out of Egypt, right? He's going to add to it. Mm -hmm. Because do you see how Shai doing away with the commandments and laws and statutes? No. Uh -uh. Not uh -huh. doing away with it. I got news for you. Even though the sacrificial law is done away for a time, all oh, that's coming back too. Come. You all know that, right? Come. Sacrificial commandments are coming back. Yeah. Okay. Read, read the book of Ezekiel. It says we're going to be sacrificing... Read what David said in Psalm, I think it's Psalms 50. Okay, so we're going to be sacrificing them. Yeah, the heathen going to have to do it. Yeah. They have to bring a sacrifice. Yeah. They're going to do it. They're going to be put to death. Yeah. The, the, the Levitical priesthood is coming back. Yeah. They're still the sons of Zadok, Aaron and Zadok, all of them are coming back. Huh? Yeah, you can read that in the uh, last book in Ezekiel. Yeah. 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 The, last, the last three chapters. Yeah, you can read that. All that's coming back. So we've only done away for a time. Because we definitely can't do no sacrifice out here because we don't know how to sacrifice a goat or a, a, a lamb or whatever. We don't know how to do it. We ain't get on the slums. Right. right. So, plus right. Yahweh Shai, the rep, uh, representation of the sacrifice. He's the, the ultimate sacrifice, So which we're going to read. So, um, all that is coming back. Yeah, real quick. I, um, this, we just read from 34 to 37, right? Yeah. Now, this is what a lot of Christians use to claim that they're entitled to the covenant of Christ. This right here, this proves right here, they're not going back with us in the wilderness. No. And, uh, and not only that, it just said in um, 37, I will cause you to pass under the rod and bring you into the bond of the covenant. Right. Well, what's the rod? Well, first of all, what's the rod? The rod is what? This is the rod. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, because we look at a rod as, of course, a whipping instrument right. or whatever. For instruction. Though. For instruction. Well, that's what this mm -hmm. is. This is to, to beat you down into instruction or, or submit yourself, submit yourself. right, yeah. uh, under the law. Okay. And, of course, remember, we uh, 
the definition that we gave of um, what was it? Uh, the mediator. Yes. Okay, to settle a dispute, right? And we also got to understand that um, Yahweh Shai also came to reconcile us, right? Yeah. Right. So, in, in in order to be reconciled, you got to submit yourself under the covenant. Yeah. Right. Submit yourself under the uh, the bond of the covenant. Yeah. Otherwise, you're gonna get. Remember the stipulations. Whatever the stipulation says, if you don't submit yourself. So the commandment has stipulations. Mm -hmm. If you don't submit yourself under what the covenant says, what the law says, then the punishment of whatever the law says will come upon you now. Huh. Yeah, but I'm just saying, this is basically a cut to the Christians. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what that means. Yeah. Go ahead, Ops. Verse 38. Hey. And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against the See, there's going to be rebels. So there's going to be uh, brothers and sisters and uh, many of our people is going to rebel against the covenant. The new covenant that's coming. Come, come. Come. I don't want to do that. What? Submit myself. What? I can't go out on the Sabbath? I can't party on the Sabbath? I can't eat pork no more, so all I did was eat bacon. Pork bacon. <laughs> I can't do that no more? No. All I did was eat shrimp and lobster and stuff. I can't do that no more? No. So you can see there's going to be a lot of rebellions. Yeah. yeah. I can't drive my car the way I want to go? No. Okay? Eventually, chariots and stuff like that are going to be phased out. Ultimately. Yeah, in the beginning, they're still going to be here and all that. But eventually, in our, in, our, in the kingdom that we rule, these cars and airplanes are going to be eventually phased out. Because what, what do they do? They pollute the air. They destroy Come. the environment. Come. Come. So, I can't do that. I want to go back to, to America, see? The rebels are going to be purged out. Going up. And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn. And they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am Yahweh. Right. So that's, that's it on that. Then go back to Exodus. So they will not enter. So what does that mean? We're not going to be in the wilderness for another 40 years. Come. Yeah. For the most part, it'll probably be like for like three, three and a half or so. The time, the length of the time of the Great Tribulation period, which is about three and a half years. Come. Yeah. So, just like we were 40 years in the wilderness coming out of Egypt, you know, that how many of our people really entered into the land? Not only, the only, the only yeah. original ones. Yeah. We're talking about two. What? Uh, Joshua. Yeah. Joshua. Yeah, who's that? And Caleb. And Caleb. Yeah. Right? Everybody else. Everybody else was the children of the it's one the children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about that, huh? Millions of people. <laughs> Millions of people. Only two of the original ones. Mosai Cole. Cole. Yeah, huh? he's walking in circles. He slew everybody. For 30, for 40 years. Yeah, that's all it was. It was like a great circle. Yeah. You think yeah. it took 40 years from, you know, when we came out of the Egypt into the, across the Red Sea? You think it, it would take 40 years to get into Atlanta Canyon? No. Because nope. you can walk from, of course, Israel into Egypt, and it's only like a maybe, maybe what, an hour walk? Not that long. Yeah, what's it supposed to be a long trip? 40 like years that. in Persia, huh? Mm -hmm. 40, 40 years in Persia. Yep. They were all wicked as hell, right? All wicked as hell. Right? So you purge them out. But this time, the purge is going to be more imminent, <laughs> right? Right. It's going to be like right now. Mm -hmm. Because we're only going to be in the wilderness for a short period of time. So. How about that, huh? <laughs> and as, as, as a command, and remember, the priests are going to be there, right? They're going to they're going to read the law again. We're going to be up there, and they're going to be teaching just like Ezra did, probably up high on a rock or something, and teaching all people who's going to be down there just listening to the law. There's no way for you to go unless you want to run out to the desert. You know you ain't going to make it <laughs> in the desert, right? Right. 
know where to go. He ain't gonna know where to go. Right? How about that? Uh, Most high is something. Exodus, uh, unless you've got some. Uh -huh. Exodus four. 24, I know you had read to what? Three, four. Yeah, three? Yeah, he's on verse 4. Verse 4. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 24, verse 4. And Moses wrote all the words of the of Yahweh and rose up early in the morning and builded an altar up under the hill and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto Yahweh. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Why, why, wait a minute. Why do that? Why take the blood of the sacrifices, half he sprinkled on the, uh, the altar, mm -hmm. okay, and then the other half he sprinkled on all the people? Did you read that point? We sprinkled on the people? Not, not yet. Okay, read that part. Verse 7. And he took the book of the covenant. No, it's Salakia. Verse 6. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. And they said, All that Yahweh have said, we will do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people. On what? On the people. So here now we uh, we we get the olive oil and anoint you, ask the Most High to heal you. But back then, Most High said, "Take that blood and put it on them." Because mm. what is the blood? See, the blood does what? It covers you. Yeah, it, it covers you, and the blood um, sanctifies. You know, sanctifies. So that's why. When you read, if somebody can get it, uh, Hebrews 9.22. See, this is what this is what the Most High got to do when he brings us back out into the wilderness this time, too. Even though the blood, and there's going to be a lot of bloodshed, correct, Con? Huh? Even though Yahweh Shai did what? He gave his blood. So we already sanctified through the blood of Hamashiach Yahushai, Khan. Khan. So he's not so much going to have to sprinkle it on all our heads again. But still, there's going to be, for our deliverance and redemption, there's going to be what? A lot of bloodshed. Can somebody read that? Uh, 922? 922. I got it. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9. Uh, start from the 21st verse. Book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 21. You said 21, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. Okay, Amen. now go up to 19. 19 verse. Start from there. Verse 19. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people. How, about, how many precepts? Oh, oh, how many? Every precept. Every precept. A couple precepts. Oh, oh, One, two, three. Oh, every. Ah, do you know how long we were out there? <laughs> out there a very long time. Because huh? there was no place to go. Huh. We were in the wilderness for 40 years, so we had time. Right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got time, Moses. Shut up. Yeah, you got time, bro. Okay, you got time. Some of us, we have time now, but some of us act like we don't. Don't, don't we? You got time now for here. But you're going to act like you ain't going to have time. You got this to do, that to do. You're making up stuff. <laughs> right? Can't make it up in the wilderness, though. Go ahead, Al. We'll start back at the top. Yes. Verse 19. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people. Wow. There you go. He actually sprinkled it with blood, the actual blood of the uh, goats and calves and lambs. And so Moses said, come in. Uh, Yachanan, come in. And took some and sprinkled it on your, your, your head. Huh? That sanctified you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now you're the most people. 
sanctified you with blood, huh? So you can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> you know, most of us people, well, I don't care how many nations you try to hide under. I don't care if you call yourself a Buddhist, whatever you want to call yourself, Muslim, Allah, whatever. Most of us say, you can't hide from me. Adam tried to hide, right? right. Amongst the people. Most of us said, nope. Right? Can't hide. Because why? You're his chosen. So you can't run away from this. Okay, go ahead up. Verse 20. Saying, This is the blood of the testament, which Yahweh he enjoined unto you. He enjoined it unto you. So it's really it's in your spirit, right? He enjoined it unto you. That's why some of you today, before you come to the truth, you got this spiritual thing like, wait a minute, something ain't right here. Because it's in your spirit. That's why scripture, scripture say you cry, Abba, Father. You know, because you're predestinated. It's in you. You can't escape it. <laughs> right? I don't care if you go to all the Esau's colleges. Most I met you come in this, you're going to come into it. Huh. You know what I'm saying? All right? It's spiritual. It's very spiritual. Go ahead. Verse 21. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle in all the vessels of the ministry. See? So even, can remember when we when it was time for us to build the tabernacle, Moses I commissioned Moses to build a tabernacle, right? So Moses built it, but now it had to be like sanctified once it was done. He had to sprinkle the blood on top of it too. And that's, you know, just the blood was sprinkled on the tabernacle and, and, and the sanctuary and the people. So that's why when Jeremiah was commissioned to hide the Ark of the Covenant, see, that's why he saw he's looking for it, but he can't find it. Because that's ours. Understand what I'm saying? That's ours. Most ain't going to allow un unclean hands to handle that thing. Right. Jeremiah hit that thing, and, and the nations went in there after him trying to find it. They couldn't find it. So now they do movies today that's like they found it. They ain't find nothing. They've been looking for that thing forever. Forever. They ain't find nothing. And then you got the Ethiopian say, we got it. No, they, they got replicas. Replicas been made for hundreds of years, like thousands of years. They don't have the real one. Okay? Because why? It's ours. It's been joined to it was bloodshed for that thing. For it to be ours from the most side. Bloodshed on it. So Esau, most I won't allow Esau to find it. Esau been looking for that thing, huh? <laughs> but them angels won't let him get to it. They won't let him get to it, huh? And you realize how many people have put, been put to death trying to look for that thing, huh? Mm -hmm. Plus he knows he wouldn't be able to handle it nowhere because the angels are there. They're going to, they you know, take you out. Okay? Go ahead, huh? 322. Verse 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. So there's no remission without shedding of blood. So there has to be a purge. There has to be um, death. Because what the Most High is doing now, he's going he's gonna, to um, rejuvenate the earth. He's going to redeem the earth too, huh? Mm -hmm. As he redeemed Israel, the earth is going to be redeemed and rejuvenated. And it can only be done that way through bloodshed. Right. That's the only way it can be done. And through fire. Fire can redeem anything. Fire can cleanse anything, right? Fire. You know what I'm saying? With bloodshed. So that shows you that we are sanctified in the most side when you um, go to uh, Psalms 50 and 5. That we are sanctified in the most side through blood. Psalm 55, Psalm 50, and Psalm. the fifth verse. Oh, I hear that church, huh? This. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was the you know, They're on this side, too. Yeah. But I thought it was the uh, Old Testament. There's a right over here. I think I hear him in the, in the background. I, don't know. I, I, hear, I think I hear him back Psalm here. 15, yeah. five. Oh, we're, all, awesome. we're all surrounded. Right? Yeah, yeah, we're surrounded by us. <laughs> Go ahead, Alex. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant 
with me by sacrifice. How about that? that we made a covenant with the Most High by sacrifice. Right. See? So when we said in the wilderness, Moses read the, to us the laws, the statutes, and we said we will do. Yes. We agreed. That was it, by sacrifice. And then he sprinkled the blood and everything on, on our heads. That was it, huh? It's a done deal. Right? We're the most high shows. It's a done deal. Huh? Huh. So why don't we accept our position in the earth as that? <laughs> as we should. As we, we have should. To accept it. Yes. Right? How people are running away from the greatest thing in the history That's of mankind. Idea. I don't understand that, huh? But they want to bring everybody with them. You're right. And but they want to stay in their sins. Yeah. Because in their sins they can do abominable things and like get away with it and nothing happens. Right. But you're more powerful in the spirit. Right. As an Israelite. As an Israelite. Right. Especially in these days of chaos right. right now, you want to follow the laws. Right. Because that's going to get you through whatever's been coming down the pike. Cool. I mean, if everything's spiritual, as you know, this world is corrupt and it's coming to an end, as we can see, there's a lot of chaos going on. The best thing to be in right now is the truth. That's right. Because if your eyes is opened up, he's going to have a hedge of protection around right. you. To get you through it. Not only that, but identifying who we are and refining our culture. Yeah. You know what I mean? We got we got to do that as well. And those are going to be the things that's going to procure us and save us. You know what I mean? That's it. That's going to get us through. Exactly. Like I said, it's going underneath the rod. Right. Man. Going underneath that rod. That's right. You know? Right. And that's going underneath what, uh, committing yourself to be submitted under your house. Yeah, because we understand is that that's the death of the testator that's, that's it. that brought us to salvation. Right. That brings us to this point that we're at right now. Huh. So right. we continue and operate in the spirit, then, you know, if God is for us, who can be against us? Huh. And, no. and now Colossians 1.15. Uh, con, con. Col Colossians one fifteen. This is the book of Colossians, chapter one, verse fifteen. Who is the image of the invisible power, the firstborn of every creature? Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai. Firstborn of every creature. And remember. Yahweh Shai was, was the first angel created also. That's right. First spirit. The most high took Yahweh Shai right out of his bosom. Boom. First spirit created. First spirit created. Come? Yep. Come. You understand that, right? Come. Amongst all the billions of angels, Yahweh Shai was that first one created. Come. Mm. He's the Alpha. And the Omega. Come? Come. Right. Verse 16. For by him were all things created. See? Who created all things? Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai. Okay. In other words, Moshe gave Yahushua the commandment, but Yahushua created it. Come, come. Go ahead, up. That are in heaven, and that are in earth. Whoa. So, how can you not uh, submit yourself? Understand, Yahushua is the one that you got to go to. If he's the creator of everything, you're gonna bypass, <laughs> bypass the creator. Right. You just can't do it, up. Come. He got the blueprint. Right. You just can't do it. <laughs> And, that, and, of course, we read about the mediator. He's the mediator. So you just can't bypass your Go Going up. Verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And how about that? It was all created for you, Yahushai, too. Now, and then you begin to see why Satan is so jealous. Because Satan wants what Yahweh Shai is given. Come. That's what Satan wants. So that, that conflict between Yahweh Shai and Satan, the spiritual Satan, he wants, and then the Most High brought Yahweh Shai down as Adam, you know what I'm saying? And, and Adam was given dominion. So Satan wanted that. But Satan blew it. He rebelled against the Most High. That's why the Most High said, "Amongst my even amongst my angels, there's folly." Come, come. Said, even amongst the angels, there's folly, right? Because you know, you read about the giants and so forth. The angels coming down, sleeping with women and so forth. He said they weren't supposed to do that. Come, come. And these they were rebellious. 
forces, spiritual forces that were rebellious. And they came down and, and dealt with the woman in the earth. That's why they, they call them Nephilim now, the children of those giants, the children of those demons that came down and slept with women. Right? And not in those Nephilim spirits that are in the earth now. Okay? Okay? So, uh, go ahead, Acts 17. Verse, verse 17. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Hamashiach Yahushai. Okay? All things consist through the spirit of Hamashiach Yahushai. That's why the scripture says, Most High has given all things into his hand. Okay, go ahead, huh? Verse 18. And he is the head of the body. He said, What? He is the head of the body. Hamashiach Yahushai is the head of the church, which is Israel. Khan? Khan. Church just means like gathering. Okay, a body, a body of people. Uh, toward like one cause. Israel, we're the nation of Israel, we're the body, we're the church of the Most High. Right, the called out assembly. Right, assembly. Right. Khan? Khan. Okay, so he's the head. So I, I don't understand how could they not read that. You know, it, it tells you right there. But again, the Old Testament, they don't read the New Testament, so, you know. But it, again, like we brother said before, they're blind. That's mm -hmm. what they're blind. Going up. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. See, the what? The beginning. He is what? The beginning. Adam. The beginning. Right, see, Khan? That's right. The beginning. Khan? Khan. So you, you really got to look into it. The beginning. He was the beginning. Khan? Okay. The firstborn from the dead, meaning Yahawashai, the resurrection of Yahawashai, he died on the cross and his resurrection of firstborn from the dead and also the conquering of, of death. Yahweh Shai was the first. Come. 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 He was the first to attain that. Come. All right, go ahead. That in all things he might have the preeminence. He's the preeminence, right? He's, he's over everybody. He's the preeminence. In your household, who's the preeminent? According to the order. Man. The man is. Mm -hmm. And even uh, the prophet tells you, the man is always to uphold the preeminence over his household. Always. Don't, don't ever give way to anything else. Don't right. give way to your, your wife, your, your children. Don't ever lose that preeminence. You're, you're the dominant force, spiritual force that's in your household. In righteousness, though. Right. Kind of, understand what I'm saying? Because you have your role. Yahushua has his role, so he's, he's doing what he's supposed to do, his duties, right? And a man has his role in his household. That's why when you read 1 Corinthians 11, it tells you, right? The man is the, uh, Yahushua is the head of the man, the man is the head of his wife, and the wife, you know, the children. Everybody has a role. The problem is everybody's out of their role now. <laughs> the right. woman want to be the man, the man want to be a woman. God. Children disrespect their parents. Their duties off, their role is off. Understand? God. And so on and so forth. Okay? That's why the whole house is sick. <laughs> Go ahead, up. Huh? Verse 19. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. See? So it pleased the Mo That's what the Most High wanted. The Most High wanted, wanted Yahweh Shai uh, for all fullness to dwell through him. Mm. Come? Come on. So that's why Yahweh Shai got a job to do, huh? He got a job. I mean, it's a heavy position, huh? Let's say all your prayers, everything got to go through your house shot. He got to, he got to cipher those prayers out and everything, huh? <laughs> and your house shot is pretty much running the whole earth, right? Right. Because that's why Satan is only given a limited power, but he can't do nothing without what your house shot tells him to do. He can't go beyond his boundaries, Satan. Come. Huh? Can't go beyond his boundaries. But here, here, here we are in, in another man's land in America. We try to go beyond our boundaries all the time. Again, a woman want to be a man. It's beyond our boundaries. That's why you can tell a, a woman that wants to be a lesbian, right? You can look at her because she's what? Beyond her normal spirit. Because she's trying to wear pertain to a man. Yeah. And, and uh, even if she don't, but sometimes you can still tell. And you can tell sometimes the uh, same thing with a man. 
that effeminate thing, effeminate vibration, because he's going beyond his boundaries, what he was made to do. Mm -hmm. See? Okay, go ahead, huh? Verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross. He had made peace. So why, why would he have to make peace? Why would Jehovah have to make Because of the conflict. We disobeyed, we broke the covenant, so now it's a conflict, right? Right. So who's going to bring peace? The, the most I said, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> the most I said, I'm going back to my throne. I'm not talking to these people no more. And so, and then we stopped communicating with the most I righteously. We bound that out of gods and stuff. So there was no really communication, right? With the most I. So the most I said, okay, you got to go out there and make peace. I, I can hear you how Shai said, damn, I got to go down there and deal with these niggas. <laughs> had to do it, huh? Not my will, but your will be done. <laughs> but your will be done, right? <laughs> got to do it. You, you think Ezekiel wanted to eat dumb? Right. You think Isaiah wanted to walk around naked? Yeah. Hosea wanted to marry a prostitute. Yeah, Hosea wanted to marry a prostitute. Do you <laughs> right. think that, huh? But it's the most size will. It's the most size will, yeah. Do you, do you think we like what we condition we in now? I don't like it. I hate it every day, y'all. Sometimes you can see it on my face. I hate it every day. But you got to go through. Even Paul said, if I can be up there with Yahweh Shai, I would do that right now. But he says it's more needful for me to be Amen. down here teaching you. Amen. Amen. Simple as that, huh? I want to do this crap. But it's what the Most High is asking for us to do. Okay? Done. You think Noah wanted to be in the ark when there's a flood of the whole earth and you want to go through that madness? No, he wouldn't go through that, huh? That's terrifying, huh? Think about that. <laughs> Everybody else is dead. You're the only one alive in the whole planet Earth. You and your uh, family. That's it. That's terrifying. Oh. See? But he had to go. He had to do it. That's why after the flood, what did, what did Noah do in his, in his tent? He got ripped. He got ripped out. <laughs> I think I would do the same thing. He got ripped. He made that he got wild. Ripped. He got it he got ripped. I would do the same thing, huh? Because you like, damn. Oh, yeah, it's full ride. Yeah. <laughs> Let's think of the boat ride that was. Yeah, that was no normal rain, huh? Right. The windows of heaven opened up. See? And they're in the, in the earth. Yeah. They use water from beneath. From beneath, too, too yeah. So, yeah, fountains up and fountains down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead, 20th verse. Uh, verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. So what, is reconcil what does reconcile mean? To bring back together. To bring back together. That's why Yahweh had to come down in the flesh. To bring us back together with the Most High. See, now when you pray, your prayer, your prayer will be heard. When before that, it would have never been heard by the most of the time. Uh, Y'all can I read the scripture in Isaiah, right? He says, uh, do away with your vain oblations, your prayers, your prayers and abominations, all that stuff. But now your prayer can be heard. Does he hear uh, anybody else's prayer other nations? No, only our prayers. Right. That was I would take. He will take to the most high. He will grab your prayer, and it's done by a spiritual spiritual vibration. When you pray, the words will vibrate. And your house shy, the angels take the it angels to your house shy, your house shy. That's why you got to pray appropriately. Because your house shy, you don't take anything to the most high. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Are you going to speak to a judge here in America any old kind of way? No. You're going to speak your kind, the best you can, respectively, right? So you how should I take it, sort of cleans it up and then brings it to the most high in a, like a sweet type of savior, incense, spiritual way. Come. Come. And the most high listened to it. Why? Because you how I said, most high, listen to this prayer. That's the only reason why the most high would listen to it. If you how don't bring it to the most, the most high didn't never heard it. <laughs> right. Think about that, huh? He never heard it. Because why? It's an abomination. Yahweh Shai is going to bring an abominable prayer to the Most High. So let's think. 
Oh, uh, millions and millions of all people praying to the Most High. How should I got decipher all that? And there's a lot of work up there. But how should I do that? It's not just sitting around, right? Think about that. So he has to work too. Hmm. He has to work for this nation too. We got to work uh, in this level. Yeah, how should I got to work on that level too? Because remember, he's still a prophet. He's still a servant of the Most High, even though he's in the spiritual world. Come, hmm. still a servant. Go ahead up. Verse 21, yeah. and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. How about that, huh? See? Through his, through his death. See? He had to do that in his flesh. So when he said to the disciples that, you know, uh, they're going to kill the Son of Man, they're going to crucify Son of Man. And the disciples, no, we don't want you to go nowhere. No, no. But Yahweh said, what are you talking about? i got to do this. I have to. To make all things new, right? So you'll be able to have, so the comforter can come to you, right? Mm -hmm. Right? And you'll have the comforter with you. But without you, how was I doing that? We wouldn't have no comfort in that. We wouldn't have the, like you said, the truth wouldn't be revealed to us. If we, he didn't do that. But now the veil is taken out of your mind, mine, so I can see it. Understand? And so now we're able to see it. But some of our people still can't see it. Which means what? Many are called, few are chosen. He didn't choose them. Mm -hmm. And the rest were blinded. And the rest were blinded. So that's why we said, if this gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are what? Lost. Oh, lost. Huh. In other words, they're going to remain that way. He don't want to open up the truth to them. It's heavy, huh? it's cold. <laughs> it's a cold deal, huh? right? So that's why we, um, that's, that's heavy. Now, Hebrews 9 and 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. He by what? By his own blood. See? Do you, need, do you need calves anymore? Goats anymore? No. So temporarily the sacrificial load is done away with because he house shy. Go on. By his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Right. Just like, just like the priest would do what? Once a year. He would do what? The Day of Atonement. What did the, did the priest do? Right. Well, in the Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. Okay, Khan? Khan. Once a year, in the Holy of Holies. Okay, but Yahweh Shah, he entered in once himself, because he brought himself in to be the sacrifice. Khan? Khan. Okay, going up. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Hamashiach, who through the Spirit offer himself without spot to the Most High, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living power? Right. See? So you see, and that's just for the nation of Israel. Huh? So you see the level that we're on? But you gotta, this is why, again, you had the Sadducees, the Pharisees, they couldn't see what Yahweh Shai was bringing because you had to come up on another level of faith. You had to come up here. If you're going to stay down there, you're never going to see it. Right? Come. And so some of them didn't want to see it because they were blinded because they wanted to remain in that position that the Romans gave them. Right? And they were blinded. So what do you think will happen in this society? Some of our people are blinded by the money. They're blinded by the position. They're blinded up, and they just, just can't see it. Or some of them are just blinded by the old uh, uh, Hebrew customs when you read the scriptures. Like you said about the Old Testament Israelites, they're blinded by that. Yeah, they, they keep the customs of the Old Testament. But now you got to come to what? The, the gospel now. And you got to bring it together. Right? You don't just do away with the Old Testament. You got to bring it together. Right. So you got to come up on this level. 
That's why a lot of brothers think that the Paul's Paul's writings are confused. No, it's not. There's no confusion. You just are not ready. To, uh, have it purge your mind in the old ways, the old conscience to come up on that level. You gotta purge your mind up. Okay, go ahead up. Verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Hamashiach through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to the most high purge your conscience from their works to serve the living power? Verse 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. How about that, see? So that, he's the mediator, mm -hmm. right? Of uh, the New Testament, and we see how a New Testament, how it is applied or how it comes, okay? There's no redemption without bloodshed, bloodshed. right? Right. So Yahushua also knew for this New Testament to really get out, he would have to be what? Crucified. He would have to die. Come? Come. Come. Go ahead, huh? That they... Our call might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Right, see? So what we did in uh, under the old covenant, okay, what we did under the old covenant, Yahweh Shai had to come with a new covenant uh, to, so that we can receive redemption, okay, of the transgressions that were under the first testament, meaning the old covenant, that we which are carried might receive the promise of eternal. So now, if we are willing to submit ourselves to the New Covenant and the New Testament and what Yahweh Shai is bringing the gospel, see, then we can receive that promise of eternal uh, uh, inheritance. Right. But again, that's why we're going to be taken out of America, brought to the wilderness, and Yahweh Shai is going to bring us under the bond of the New Covenant again. And then right there, you make a decision whether you're going to accept it or not. Come? And there's going to be some that's going to rebel. They're rebelling men, they don't accept it. Come? Come. <laughs> right? Because there are some people, you, let's say in your household, you have three or four or five children, and you give them the rules of the house. Some of your children, they get all mad and emotional, they don't want to do it, but they go and do it, don't they? Right? Right. But then you have the ones that rebel totally. They don't do nothing. What are you going to do with them? You get a straight in. You got to whoop their asses. <laughs> right? You almost got to purge them, right? <laughs> because even though you got the ones who get mad, but they still do it, okay, you, you, you know, you work with them, right? And then through time, they are able to accept it. But the ones who flat out rebel, you whoop their behinds, don't you? You have to. Yeah, it's going to get worse. Huh? It's going to get worse. Oh, it's going to get worse. Yeah. Right. So what does Yahweh Shai got to do? The ones he purged out, he got to use them as what? An example. Come. So that the rest can see. That's what they're going to be, examples. Yeah, you remember what the most I did to that million of Negroes over there? <laughs> they put them to death. <laughs> and they had Yachanan chop his head off. That was somebody of his own family. See, now you're going you to say, wait a minute, I don't want that to happen to me. So, there are examples, huh? Examples have to come. And let me tell you, if you've got three or four or five children, you've got to make some examples of some of them, don't you? You have to. So that the rest of them can see, <laughs> whatever daddy says do, I better do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, it's the same thing. So, uh, I think that was it, right? right? Uh, of course, I had... A lot more scriptures, but it's uh, 10 to 3. So, <laughs> unless y'all want to hear a few more scriptures. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay, we can go through a few more. Um, let's see, the, the one in uh, t Hebrews 10. In 1. Hebrews 10 and 1? Yeah. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually 
make the comers they're on too perfect. Now, how about that? <laughs> is the law again? Is the law? Is the law? The Old Testament law have mistakes? No. We Not at all. Mistakes. Right. We were imperfect ones, Con. Because you're talking about the statue is nothing but a written law. So the, the statue didn't do anything. All right? It was who the most I gave it to. And then when we made the agreement that we'd keep it, then we didn't keep it. No, because we, we kept bringing them blame innovations. Right. Exactly. Right. You understand? So, so in that, the old covenant is perfect within itself, but we didn't keep it. Con? So... Um, so when it reads like that, because it makes it sound like the Mosai gave us a mistake. Mm -hmm. See, again, in the translation, that's how Esau put it, but it, there was no mistake in that old covenant. Con? Not at all. That's why he said, what iniquity have you found in me? Right, what iniquity have you found? Right. right. <laughs> Go ahead, huh? For then, would they not have ceased to be offered? Because so now we needed another agreement. Right? And he's saying, under those old sacrificial laws, you wouldn't have stopped offering them. We would probably still be doing it. Right. Right? <laughs> we would still be doing it. Amen. So you ain't wouldn't have said, but y'all can I read the scripture. Tell me that scripture was again. It was um, Isaiah uh, 1, 11 uh, through 14. Right. He said, he called it vain oblations. Now, most of us saying the sacrificial law, the blame, a uh, vain to him? No. He's saying the way you bring it in. Is vain to him. Yeah, because you think you can commit, keep committing sins, and you're going to be made per perfect continually by just making the sacrifice, right. and it ain't doing nothing. He'd rather that you not commit right. the iniquity. Right. right. That's why you read Roman again. Romans what was it, ten and one? We wrote, uh, ten and one. Mm -hmm. You you were bringing the sacri you were bringing the sacrifice, but you wasn't made perfect doing it because you was you was kept sinning. You're supposed to bring a sacrifice one time, learn from it, and then keep the commandment. It's, it's an almost two. It's an almost on five. Yeah. Come on, come on. Okay, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Um, go back in um, Hebrews. Yeah. Go on down. Lock you. Oh, yeah. Hebrews 10. You were Hebrews 10. I think you read, read one. Right? One, yes. Yeah. But then, verse two. But then, were they not have ceased to be offered because the worshippers once purged should have not no more conscience there you go. of sin. You shouldn't have no more conscience of sin once you are purged and once you brought your sacrifice to the priest you would have been purged from your sin. Con? Con. So that was like that was like an, a, 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 a goat or a lamb you used to atone for yourself. Con? Con. How about that? Verse 3. Go but in those sacrifices there is remembrance again made for the sins every year. Right. There's a remembrance made every year. Because why? It, it, didn't, it didn't make you perfect. Right. It was kind of monotonous. You just bring it. You know you can get away with it. So you right. just brought a goat or whatever. Every time you did the same thing, you brought a goat, you got away with it. Yeah. And it wasn't meant for that. That's why most times say that. That's vain. Yeah, because you wouldn't change. Then you wouldn't change. Right. You got the goat out of Atone for my you're sins next right. year. I'm you're good. Right. I'm good. I'll come back in next year. You're right. doing the same thing. <laughs> it wasn't meant to. It wasn't, it wasn't meant, meant for that. For that. No. Go ahead. Huh? Verse four. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherein he cometh in into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. There you go. See, and that's how Mashiach y'all. A body has thou prepared me. And that's something for the whole nation of Israel, Mosai. One man, Mosai, prepared that body. Okay? And from Yahweh Shai, from when he was born, he was really in preparation for his crucifixion. From the day he was born, in preparation for his crucifixion. And, and, and they crucified him at the age of 33. Yahweh Shai was crucified A.D. 30 at 33 years of age. Okay? He was born... Uh, 5 B.C. Because I also, I did a paper on the chronology of okay. Hamashiach Yahushua. He was born 5 B.C. Yeah. When when the year zero comes, because Yahushua sort of split history in half, right? When the year zero comes, 
Yahweh Shah was four years old. He went, it went from B.C. to A.D., right? Right. The year zero. He went from 5 B.C., 4 B.C., 3 B.C., 2 B.C., 1 B.C. He's four years old at the year zero. Mm -hmm. He remains four in the transition from B.C. to A.D. because year zero is what? Year zero. Okay? Four minus zero is what? Four. Four. Come. Four plus zero is what? Four. Four. He remained four years of age. So when one AD comes, right? Now he turns the next age, right? One AD, two AD. So when AD thirty comes, he's thirty-three years of age. That was his crucifixion year. Time. Okay, A.D. 30. So, I did a paper on that, but I, I, we'll go into that later on. Yeah. Go ahead, up. You know. And that was just for the nation of Israel, too. That was just for you know, the nation of Israel. not for everybody. Right. The sacrifice has been made for his nation, his people. Right. No one else can join in into this thing. You know? That's it. Mm -hmm. Good. The nations so are... So, we should rejoice in that, you right. know? How about that, huh? Yeah, of all that we've been through on this earth and this planet and slavery and hatred towards each other and whatnot, but we really have hope now through Yahweh Shai, you know what I mean, Hamashiach. You know, right. It's like a superpower, you know? Right. If you just tap into that thing, it's going to bring forth fruit. Good. You know? Okay, anyway. go ahead and finish that. And, uh, uh, that would be it. Yeah. Let me see. Verse 4? Fine. Yeah. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said... Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had, had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Okay. To... <laughs> How about Hagar the book here? The That's Bible. it. See, uh, uh, you know, a lot of uh, brothers may think, okay, it's the New Testament. No, it's the whole Bible. Come. Come. The whole Bible. Because it, it'll tell you that in Psalms, what, 40? 40 and 7. 40 and 7. 40 the Bible broke down. Here, yeah, here he's telling you again. Paul's telling you again in the New Testament. It comes in the bottom of the book. So he's telling you what? The whole Bible is Yahweh Shah. That's right? right. He was in the wilderness. Right. He's, he's everywhere, everywhere with us. Everywhere. Everywhere. Everywhere we were, he was he there. He was there. He was no. always there. Huh? With his people. I don't understand, brothers, you know. They make this thing harder than it is. Yahweh Shai, in, in, in the Mount Sinai, Yahweh Shai was there. The burning bush. Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. He came to Joshua. He said, Joshua, the ground you, you stand on is holy ground. Take off your sandals. I am the captain of the host. That's what he told Joshua. I run, in other words, I run this. <laughs> he said, Abraham. Okay, they called him Mount Tenzin back then. He said, Abraham. You know what I'm saying? And Abraham blessed mm -hmm. and gave Yahweh 10% of all his uh, spoils for yeah. the war. This was Abraham. Right? Right? Yeah, Metrizadak. That was Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. See, all throughout like history. With a book. Yeah. It's everywhere. He was Jacob's dream. He, yeah. he gave Jacob that dream. Yeah. Jacob's mm -hmm. ladder. Yeah. He is that ladder to bring us back to the Most High. Yeah, he, said, he said, Abraham, you got to sacrifice your son, Isaac. And he's going to become the sacrifice. Your house shine. How about that? They can receive it. If they can receive it, right? How about that, huh? Solomon said, Who do they say the son of the most I is? If you know it, tell me it. That means Solomon understood who he was, huh? That's right. Solomon understood who he was. Even then, Solomon said, I know who I am. Can the wisest, most intelligent, wisdom, richest, King there ever was. Right. Right? And the, the most I told David, he said, David, <clears throat> your son's going to be king, but if he commit iniquity against me, I'm going to whoop him with the stripes of men. That was shy. And Solomon. Solomon. He said Solomon. That's but Solomon. Solomon never got whooped, did he? Nope. Mm -hmm. Not at that time. Not at that time. So who's he talking about? Now you that know. Shy. Right. right. That's why David's going to sit on the throne 
Right. And Solomon is Jehoshaphat. Right. <laughs> so it's, it's Jehoshaphat, then King David. Right. Then 144,000. Right. That's why the disciples were saying, you read Acts, I think, the second chapter. He said, um, David, his sepulcher is with us today. But Yahushai rose. Right? Three days, three nights, he rose from the sepulcher. So why do they say, uh, why did uh, David say, the Lord said unto my Lord, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the spirit, right? Sit thou uh, on my throne until I make my enemies uh, footstool. Mm -hmm. Understand? The most I showed David, the Lord said to my Lord. Right? Yeah. yeah. Most I showed Watch David it. that David would come, uh, that Yahushai would come through David's loins. Huh. Most I showed, David knew that. See, we I got news for you. David knew who Solomon was. Mm -hmm. He understood who Solomon was. They, they, they were, they were, they were uh, far above, ahead of their time, man. Okay, so because they dealt, and 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 David was beloved of the Mosai. The Mosai showed David a lot of stuff. Oh, and he, he had a righteous hatred towards Esau too. Right. Uh, yeah. How about that natural hatred towards Esau? <laughs> Though I might hate them, I hate God. I hate yeah. them with a perfect hatred. Yeah. Understand? So he said, yeah. Okay, Mosai, the Lord's going to come through my loins and set up the kingdom of heaven. Right? That's why it's good to tell you in, in the regeneration, he said, David's going to be y'all's leader. He's coming back. David. Uh -huh. And we all been regenerated. Yeah. So there's nothing new on the earth. Huh. Nothing new. Huh? Is that it? I, yeah, I know you're reading to eight verse, but if you... You had more. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah. Well, we get, we're going to leave it at that. Verse 7, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. Well, right. It is okay. written of me to do thy will, O power. Come. Right. So we can leave it right there. Right. I mean, I had about a good five more scriptures, but nevertheless, we do, we do it next week, whatever. Okay, uh, so that's yeah. that's it. All praise to the Hava Bar Shram. I'm Marsh Yaki Al Shrai. Kwam Yashala. 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 That was good.